Hello and welcome back to Urbeck City Builder. In our last episode, we started a new town here in the uh, default temperate biome. Uh, we have quite a few houses and a fair amount of farmland here too planted. We're doing very well on our balance of things. Uh, if anything, we could actually handle a bit more housing and uh, spend a little bit more of that food. But we'll see how that works out as time goes on. We could probably also, and we probably should also, uh, build a couple more lumber camps to expand our production here of wood. Otherwise, we're going to go negative pretty soon, I think. But energy is doing well. Uh, we have 818 people. 7.9 happiness and uh, four park areas that we can expand anytime uh, let's see we have oh i know what else happened i as i was watching the premiere with everyone um yesterday i noticed that i mowed right over the uh, lumber camp and the lumberjack cabin that were here in this in this area they were on this side of the road but i'll put them over there on that side of the road just for uh reasons although maybe i should have put it on this side of the road so that we can get to the lumberjack house. Uh, we can get there. We can get there just by putting in, I think, a little bit more housing here, which we need to do anyway because, um, well, we need to get more population because the next thing we need to build is the water mill that we looked at at the end of the last, uh, the last episode, and that means we need to have 900 people so we need to oops we need to fill this up a little bit more but i'm not going to destroy too much of this forest because um well we need it for the for the uh for the lumber camps so i don't want to take out too many of these trees i probably won't build very many more houses maybe i'll just do even just the two here kind of thing uh, let's go ahead and actually build a few more houses uh, i think that'll actually be good never mind and that just upgraded to a lumberjack house good we timed it just right. I'll go a little bit fast forward here. So we can try and populate those. There they go. 900. Okay, so now we can build the water mill. Uh, it'll give us energy, and it should be built next to the river. There it goes. Popped up. Uh, it should be built next to the river. It needs a bit of wood for constant repairs to keep it running. And I remember that this was a little bit weird to... Oh, thank you, developer. Oh man, Bruco, you are, uh, you are, I am a fan of yours. Uh, um, there is, uh, there used to be, the last time I played, I think during the prologue, these yellow boxes weren't here, so you really had no idea where this was supposed to go. Um, but now you do. And, uh, yeah, three squares of the road, so I did place this road properly. This one here is actually broken, but I think we can get around it if we want to put a watermill out there. Although, if I put one here, then I can't get one out there. So I think we'll just go here, watermill, and uh, water can also give you food. If you're playing on a map with water, build a dock. You can do it either in the sea or in the river. Uh, so yeah, that's what the sea is good for. The sea edges is, is the uh, is is fishing, but we'll put some here too. So you can see the the water mill, the water mill. Uh, running there with the with the stream and it actually is rotating in the correct direction with the flow of water too and i think it they always do uh we can test it out i suppose if we wanted to by putting another one on this far side over here but we'd have to also have roads over there so maybe after we build over here or something we can put some down and we'll see but i'm pretty sure that i remember that the wheel actually turns with the uh, flow of the water the same direction as the flow of the water so let's look at the dock is that here? Yes. And we need 1,050 pops. So let's um, build a little more housing here. And like I said, we're going to keep this corner here forested. And I think we need one... Yeah, we need one more right here, actually, for my, for my design. Oops, that's the... Uh, yeah. We could do another policy, though. That's true. Um, although I'm not sure which ones I would want to have. Specifically, I think I'm just going to leave it alone for now, and then uh, we can go from there. Uh, the football pitch thing is interesting. I think it's... I don't know when those pop. Uh, I thought they were here in parks, but maybe they're here. That's the bar. Oh, here it is. Football pitch. Duh. Yeah, we need a little bit more happiness for that, so we'd have to work a little bit harder on that one. Um, and we we'll probably would need to get some of these other houses, maybe decommission some of these houses that are, uh, 
that are wooden huts or not do as many tenant farmers because they only have five happiness. Uh, that's a possibility too. All right, so let's see. Population is now at nine nine eighty four. Okay, so let's look at a, uh, another spot to put in some population here. Um, I do want to continue the road this way. Maybe we could even put in some people, uh, some housing rather, over here. Uh, I want to continue the farms this way, and my plan for the farms is to have it be a ten wide block. We have five here, so one, two, three, four, five. So the road for the farm should go there. And that way it's a 10 wide block so that we can get uh, as many farms in there as we possibly can. So I think we'll put a little bit more housing over here. Uh, like this. That one's fine. That's the farmhouse. Um, it's fine being there. Uh, I just won't build there, but it's just it's using these farms that are near its edge here. Um, to, to drive. Ah, we've reached an achievement of small town. Uh, Steam achievement. That must have been at a thousand people, I'm guessing. And you can see that my happiness score is going down, and that's because of the um, the um, houses or village houses now. Or, yeah, or wooden huts now. They haven't upgraded to the village houses yet. We just unlocked the fishing dock, so let's go ahead and put one of those out. I guess the same rules apply here. No dock in a six tile radius. So let's just go ahead and put it right next to the water wheel because um, the um, the house or the, the water wheel can't be any closer than this anyway. So this and then these have uh, actually larger. Is that larger? Yeah, one tile larger. So there's extra space here that we aren't going to be able to fill with either one right now. So we might as well just fill it with those. We just um, I actually haven't been following these. Oh, no, I did. Okay, never mind. As you may have noticed, to get energy and food from water, you need a lot of wood. Check your wood production by hovering over the wood indicator. We're still good on, on wood production right now, but we'll obviously need to have a little bit more uh, eventually. Now, if you build houses near the dock with access to the water, excuse me, sorry, they will be transformed into fishermen's houses, which will give you food. Get a fisherman house. All right, so let's build some houses kind of right here in this area. Um, kind of crowding around the dock a little bit, but um, not exactly. Is that a forest there? No, it's an empty tile. Put a house right there, too. But you can see here, the fisherman house uh, has a rule of uh, no pollution, of course. Should be built by the sea or river. I guess the diagonal is enough here, I guess. Um, because these aren't upgrading here to fisherman houses. And then one or more dock in a six tile radius. So you can see that the fishermen houses uh, have these nice bright colors, and uh, which is which is kind of kind of fun to see. Yeah, this one isn't upgrading to a fisherman's house, so it must the diagonal must be good enough, um, or right on the dock. And I like how the docks even extend around the houses if they are here right at the uh, at the wharf. Um, you can see that here too. That's a really neat uh, neat feature, a neat aspect to it. But they, um, they produce food and work. They consume electricity. So we need to uh, probably, no, actually we don't need to deal with electricity yet. So that's good. Um, these should be upgrading eventually to, uh, to village houses. What's their problem? Not dense enough. Yeah, actually, can I put more in here? Were there trees here and they're gone now? I think there were. Um, maybe I should also move this lumber camp. Yeah, let's move this lumber camp over a little bit. I guess I need to delete that one first. Maybe even this. Yeah, let's move this too. Uh, so the, the trees are actually consumable, and they'll replant them. But I think I want to move this over just a little bit here, like right there. And then um, the lumberjack cabin. We need to have enough houses in range, but I think we can probably go right there with it. And I think it'll be okay. Yeah, it's going to upgrade. And then I can put another house in here. And in here. Um, these trees are gone, but I believe they'll replant them. Or they will regrow eventually, if left alone. But the trees will only regrow in the kind of designated forest regions. Which you can see with the layer screen here. The dark green. It has to be... I think it has to be in the dark green in order for trees to grow automatically. Oops, that's not the right button, Wally. Okay, so back to uh, the, the tutorial here. Let's see what you need to do to get Wealthy Village House from Village House. 
click with the magnifying glass on one of your village houses. And then in the list of the possible upgrades, updates, click on wealthy village house. Well, we need to unlock it at 1300 population, so that's obvious. Uh, we need to have food services in a five tile radius. First, you need to unlock them at 1300 population, and they need food services given by a mini market or local market. Leisure given by parks, bars, or football pitches. We happen to have some of that. And density given by other houses, which is um, this here. The food markets are, where did I see them? Here? No. No. Here. Mini market and local market. Those both unlock at 1300 population as well. So let's just keep expanding our population down here. Should I put this road in here and make this like a four-way intersection? I think so. Let's do like that. And then we'll do some housing here. And I'm not going to destroy the trees just yet, at least. You can see already these upgraded to a rural road from a road. And they get a little sidewalk there. And a few more houses. This became These became village houses, which is good uh, because we can use that. I don't want to do too much population growth because I don't want to override or over uh, overload our food. But on the other hand, we do need a lot of population, so maybe I should just do it. But being so uh, nervous, Wally. And uh, don't worry about having a lot of food or a lot of work available or, you know, in increase or uh, increments. It, we're going to use it for other things soon. Near some of your village houses, build a local market or a mini market for services. The local market needs fields nearby, while the mini market can be built anywhere but consumes food. We added a lot more buttons down here, so you can see. Uh, what was that ad again? Here? Yeah. No. Here. No. This one. Jeez. Uh, it's in the, the civic, the landmark services, this in, which is where all the civic stuff is. So, uh, mini market costs a thousand work to build. Uh, consumes 50 work and 200 food. Whereas the um, the local market costs 500 work to build. And only consumes work. Consumes a little more work, but it doesn't consume any food. So, as they said, uh, this one needs to have eight or more farms in a five tile radius. So, if we're going to use this, we need to put it down somewhere where there's five there's farms around. So, we're going to want to put one, you know, maybe maybe right around in here somewhere. I'm going to all click it so that it overrides the field. It has uh, 44 farms in a five tile radius because it's a large area here. You can already see it's upgrading uh, several of these village houses. I saw it. Didn't I see it? Oh, we need the leisure too. Oh, no. Uh, let's put a park in here. We could do a nice park. Let's do a nice park right there. Boom, there they go. There they all go. All right. So, wealthy village house now uh, produces a bit more food. Or work, rather. No, the same work. But it consumes more food and more energy. But it also gives us a little bit more happiness. 11 happiness for the same square versus 8. And still the eight residents. So it's a good thing to have. Um, our our energy uh, has come down a little bit because of those wealthy village houses consuming a lot more energy. Um, but we're still doing good otherwise. And we shot up to eight and a half happiness, which means we unlocked the football pitch and something else that I don't remember. Uh, that was here with sports. There we are. Uh, these can also go here in the center. Um, it needs to be, well, these need to be within three row tiles now. That's new. That used to not be the case. Uh, let's put it... Let's maybe put it, like... Here, I think, maybe? Uh, those used to be able to be put anywhere. They, they changed that, which is probably a good thing. But uh, So maybe this strategy of this layout of block doesn't make any sense. But that should help with uh, the leisure and the sports in the area here. Uh, the wooden hut, or this one devolved into a wooden hut just now because uh, there are fewer houses in the area. Um, but we can also continue putting down these markets to um, to to drive a little bit more uh, wealthy village house placement. So I, I placed this one specifically so that it would overlap entirely with that um, with the edge of that block. So we can put down another one here. Um, 
now here. Uh, local market, yeah. Put down another one here that can do the same on this side. And remember, these are going to overlap a little bit, but that's okay. So we'll go right there. And boom, those already started upgrading. And that's enough for now, I think. I don't want to go too crazy with this because you can see our food is plummeting again. Uh, so we're actually actually put, probably have to put down some more fields here. And then that should hopefully, hopefully, uh, get us a little bit more food balance there. Big step now will be to get skilled work. For that, you need suburb houses, which need schools, which in turn need iron. Make an iron mine near an iron deposit. You'll find two groups of iron deposit on the map. We may actually find a little bit more because I did the large map. There's one right here. Uh, there is one right here. There's one right here. Yes, there's at least three, and I could have missed one. Knowing me, I probably did. Uh, but we're going to come down here to this one. Uh, the iron mine is probably an industry, I guess. Uh, do we do? Yeah, we did. The iron mine is here. It needs 1,700 population. So uh, we actually have to do a bit more. But it also, by the way, I, I just saw, it also requires 10 wealthy village houses. So we had to do at least some of these upgrades to wealthy before we can get there. We also want to have... Uh, 1800 population for to unlock the suburb house uh, and then we also need to have one school to unlock the suburb house and we need to have a school within range the school is here under education of course and it needs 1800 population and 20 wealthy village houses plus it needs a hundred iron to build 100 iron and storage to build so we um so we're gonna want, we're gonna need to work on that. But the first thing, of course, is to work on the housing. So let's continue with that that project here, and let's go this way. Some uh, probably should have put a road in here too somewhere. We could also put it in later too, I guess. One, two, three. Here would be where I would want it, but I think I could go even back one um, to where the houses here on the end are. There's three of them. That would be fine, too. One, two, three, here. There we go. Just that way we can we can fill these other areas in here. I'm not going to worry about the trees in this area. Um, although we, can, we need to put a house over that tree. Uh, we can go like this. I need to look at the food. I probably need to put down some more food fields and maybe some other uh, field related or farm related things here let's do a road here and can we put in some ideally not tenant farmers because they are um, lower happiness but if we need to do them we can uh, farmhouse would be my first choice here let's see I think we can go here with it yeah, we can go right here with it. And then we could probably do another one right here. Yep, right there. And that'll help with our food production a bit, too. And we just unlocked the iron mine I saw. We passed 1,700 people. So let's see what that takes to... to uh, or what that does here. Uh, this is going to cause... I think this causes... No, it produces 5 iron. Uh, it consumes 40 work. So that's why we need a lot of work, because these this industry stuff starts producing. Um... I thought this caused pollution, too, but maybe it doesn't. So, let's go ahead and put one down. Um, iron, Since iron is a fairly limited resource on the map, one of the strategies I came up with uh, a while ago, in probably my like Alpha 4 series, I think, was to put the iron mines so that they were barely touching the iron. So, like, put the first one right here. Way, way, way far away from it. But... It's still touching at least one iron node, which means that it will get, it'll be able to mine the iron. Um, and then that also means since you can't have an iron industry item within five tile radius, the uh, orange box there, um, this allows you to uh, put down more iron mines than if you put it right next to it. Because if you put it right next to it, now you've killed that entire. Um, yellow box from having any iron mines in it. If you put them way out here like this, then you can fit one in here. You can fit one way down here somewhere at the edge of the map kind of thing. One over here in this corner someplace, and then one over here 
uh, at the far edge over here. So that was my strategy. I'm not sure if uh, if it's a common strategy or not, but uh, I'm going to go with it still. To increase your iron production, you can build houses near the iron mine that will be transformed into iron miners' houses, although the living conditions are pitiful. These houses need to be next to the road. Get five iron miners' houses. Well, we've already got one right here. A two now, it looks like. There only will be just the block adjacent to the roads. The ones right behind are still village houses. Um, and then this one is too far. Actually, there's a cactus there. That's not even a house plot. There we go. Uh, what was the range on these? Five tiles. So once we get too far away here... Um, actually, should go all the way down to this one. Interesting. Maybe they won't devolve from village houses into iron miners' houses. Yeah, so these three are iron miners' houses, but the rest here aren't. Let's just put down two more house plots here, just so we can get that five iron miner house uh, uh, tutorial done. There they go. Look at the possible evolutions of houses and click on the evolution for suburb house. You will see that you need education given by the school, food services given by a mini market or local market, high density it will be your central houses that will be transformed, and at leisure given by parks, sport buildings, culture buildings, etc. So let's uh, look at the school. We need to have just a few more people. I think we can go ahead and put down one more house plot here, and that should help with that. Um, so all these are now producing an additional one iron, but they also consume an additional one power uh, in addition to the ten food, compared to, say, a wooden hut that um, that produces work, which those do not because they produce iron instead, and still consumes the ten food. So you kind of have to always be balancing everything out, but um, having this bonus of iron production around this means that this strategy is a little bit less necessary because you can just have one iron mine and a bunch of houses, especially if you put them in very narrow city blocks. Um, but still having the extra iron mines with for, to, in order to get the extra storage uh, seems to make sense to me. So with five houses plus the five produced here, we're now producing 10 iron per minute and we can store up to 500. The school, as we saw, will take a hundred, so we need to accumulate a little bit more, a little bit faster. And I think we'll do that by putting down a few houses on this side of the road, and then also here on this side of the road. And I think that's we can go one further, even. School unlocked. That gave me the people I needed, and we get a little more iron going here. And we're a little over a hundred iron now, so we can build the school. So as the uh, as this implies, and as the tooltip implies, in order to get the wealthy house, we need to put the school. Uh, sorry, the suburb house. We need to put the school here where the um, where the wealthy houses are. And I think I almost sized this block perfectly to hold one school and make it fit as one tile too big. <laughs> uh, that's one of the strategies that um, you eventually probably want to come up with is how big to make your city blocks to optimize the, the ranges on the different buildings. And as I said at the beginning of yesterday's episode, I really didn't have any memory of how this worked. So, you know, how these blocks work, how any of that works. So I didn't really remember how big to make these blocks. Um, so I just kind of guessed. And I'm off by one, which is pretty standard for me. But uh, that's fine, too. I think we're going to focus it toward this way. But I want to leave a couple spaces there for some parks and things. Uh, green spaces for later. And we just unlocked Suburb House. And they're starting to pop up here now. So these produce skilled work. Uh, the next low, the next type of work which we need for future uh, technological things. Uh, these consume even more power than the uh, than the wealthy village houses do, an additional power. So we're getting a little bit lower on our power buffer here, but we can always put up another uh, water mill. We'll just need to probably also put up some more lumber camps. Okay, so um, we did that. Click next. And then it probably passed us through... Yeah, make a suburb house appear. Oh, build a school first. We did that. And then um, updated... Uh, make a suburb house appear. We did that. Uh, and actually, they'll upgrade from the regular village houses too, not just the wealthy ones. So if we come way over here, where we just have village houses, for example, uh, maybe even here... Uh, if we had, we could have the ability to get this to a suburb house if we had food services over here, too. Back up again. Uh, we did that. 
Okay. And yes, if you have insufficient food or energy, your house is one upgrade. So make sure you ha always have at least a little bit of surplus production on everything. Great. Suburb houses provide skilled work, but their living conditions, happiness, are worth in those of wealthy village houses. Click on one of your suburbs. And to find out how happy its inhabitants are, inhabitants are spoiler, 10 compared to 11. So, so yeah, here their happiness is uh, 10 for the 10 people living there. And here in the wealthy village house, uh, it's 11 for the 8 people there. So we fit a couple more people in, but we suffer due to happiness. Although you can build your city however you want, you could also win the level by fulfilling all the achievements of your chosen path. So you can unlock the next level. Press N to see how you're doing. Uh, let's see, we could build some more villas, um, we could do some more wood production and finish this one, or we could put some more green areas in. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit more wood production just to get this one, just so that we can see that we have it. Um, okay. N uh, note one of the possible improvements to the wooden hut called the poor suburbs. I did not note that. Uh, let's find a wooden hut here someplace. Over here? Yeah, there we are. Poor suburbs. Here we are. Uh... These need, we can unlock it at 2200 population and they need one school. They need to have uh, one square condominium in a three tile radius and no pollution, of course. And uh, that we get, I think, in the, um, in the parks area. Yeah, in the parks area here, but that also needs 2200 population. Uh, those are basically like a, like a, uh, like a, like it looks like a basketball court, I think, or like a, like a, like a paved play area um so we need to get to poor suburbs but i want to go ahead and do the lumber camp first we're kind of getting low on wood anyways so it wouldn't hurt to put down put it up another lumber camp uh those are right over here in industry lumber camp um to put one out here that should be fine and then i probably should put one out this way somewhere too oh, we have one right there okay never mind uh that gets me to 75, so we need one more. Uh, if we brought this road this way, yeah, let's bring this road this way. Actually, we can cut right into the forest here and put it inside here. Like this. Achievements. We, uh, we have the path of productivity, so now we should see mini trucks on the roads. Let's see if we can find one and we'll uh, zoom in on the little... There's one right there. Whoa, uh, that didn't do what I wanted it to. Over here. There we go. Faster, faster, faster. There we go. Bloody mini trucks. So it's not just cars anymore. That's, um... I love the pixel graphics, too, on these. Like, I don't know. I'm a sucker for pixel graphics, I guess. Or voxel graphics, rather. All right, so let's work toward the uh, square condominium thing here. We can we can probably take, take care of that with this one right here because it's covered by the school. As long as we get those square condominiums placed here, uh, and then we'll get that poor suburb. Um... We need to get to 2200 population though, so that's going to be a little bit more work on this front. Let's go ahead and put up some more housing. And I'm just going to keep doing the kind of village house uh, type. I'm not going to really focus on other services just yet, but we'll do those a little later. They're kind of uh, a good enough value for me for the bulk of my housing at this point in the game at least. And we can come back in here and continue the path of productivity, by the way, and we'll get another uh, another larger truck here if we produce more wood and have more grain silos. So we kind of continue that path once we've chosen it. You can't, you can't get success under multiple of them. Uh, let's see, we're at tw 2022, yeah. All right, let's continue this road this way. Um, these are popping now. Uh, we're probably going to need to put up some more farms, too. I think I'm going to just close off this road, or not close off, but uh, I put that uh, lumber camp in just the wrong spot. Of course I did. There, and then lumber camp can move over by one. That's fine. And then we can do, I guess, just some more farm fields in here, right? Fields cannot be built in coniferous, coniferous forests, right? So you have to build fields on grassland. It cannot be built in the uh, in the snow, and it can't be built in the desert, I believe. Uh, let's do another farmhouse. If we can get one in, like right in here. 
Let to get us a little bit more food production. Stabilize things a little bit. Can we do any more um, silos? Or did I mess myself up with the size here? No, actually, I think I can do... No, it doesn't like those are it thinks those are too close. So I should have pushed these out by another uh, tile here. I guess I could I could just move them. Let's just do that. There and there. There and there. And then we'll do um, fields here to here. And then we can do the grain silos here, there, and then down here, right on the road. Uh, that's fine. And then up here as well. Actually, we could probably tighten these up a little bit closer. And squeeze one more in. Like we talked about before. Possibly, yeah, right there. We can put the grain silo on the uh, on the coniferous forest, though. That works out well. Alright, so that's a few more grain silos now. Uh, five, which I think was actually the number we were aiming for. Um, we could even tighten these up a little bit more, too. I should have done that, I guess. Let's do that. And we'll put up some more fields here. And then I can do... Uh, grain silo like directly across from this one right here and then another one way over here in the corner and now we have six it's even better there was something that needed five i can't remember what it was now but something needed five to unlock so that's that's what we'll do uh let's continue with housing uh, now that we have a bit more food supply uh eventually we'll have to close this block off but i'm not sure where i want to do it yet maybe somewhere i'm not sure um so we'll just keep making houses uh, here on both sides of the road. Eventually, I will take out some of these houses to put in the other iron mine. Maybe I should do that sooner rather than later. Uh, because, let's see, iron mine here. Yeah, let's put one of these way, way back here. Uh, right there. Just like that. All right, so we now have 2200. So we unlock poor suburbs and square condominiums. Um, this will also cause a lot of these houses here to evolve into iron miners houses because we put this iron mine way back here so even if these weren't already village houses they would have evolved into iron miners houses which have the uh, really poor happiness so our happiness came down again but that's fine let's um put up a square condominium over here in this corner someplace uh, maybe i want to move this uh, neighborhood council yeah let me move that slightly uh that was in this one here and then let's put up one of those uh square kind of minions right here yes perfect so it's like a little paved playground area uh, but that should be enough to get this one to evolve into a poor suburb and we could do this a little more thoroughly elsewhere uh you must have upgraded another one over oh here's one right here poor suburbs so the happiness goes up to seven from the uh, six that these had, but um, but we um, and we get more people in it too, but they're not as good as the regular suburbs who have ten happiness for ten people. So you kind of get kind of get the idea that there's there's all these different paths. What, what are you complaining about? Not enough farms, maybe. I don't know what that's complaining about specifically. Maybe there's not enough fields in the area. I may need to rearrange some of these to put that in. Although, I, let me put it in here. Hmm. I don't know what that's complaining about. I don't see any negatives over here. And when I click on it, it doesn't show me anything. There's no mouse over thing either. Hmm. I don't know. So advance in the green areas path, you must increase the green areas and you will unlock different types of parks, such as the paved area, the graveled area, or the floral park. For the floral park, you need a lot of green areas. So for now, build a graveled area. Okay, that's here in uh, parks. And the graveled area is going to require us to have a few more green areas. So let's put up a few more parks there. Uh, just kind of scatter them around in this area. Oh, that was on the tenant farmer. Abandoned. Not enough. 
Not enough farms in the range? Okay. Then we'll uh, we'll delete that one. We'll put a farm in there instead. Or field in there, rather. And then we can move that tenant farmer to a slightly different spot over here, say. That's a little bit more um, accessible for them. And we can even spray, you know, space these out a little bit more, too. Where were we at with the uh, gravel thing here? One more green space. Uh, let's put one down here, maybe. There we go. And now we should be able to unlock the gravel area. No. Why did you not let me unlock the gravel area? There it goes. This takes a moment. That's what it is. Uh, so let's put this gravel area around someplace. Maybe right here. And so this um, this counts as a leisure and a green area. Um, and it consumes work to maintain it. So it's just like a little gravel path walk area, walkway area kind of thing. Uh, but again, it counts as as green areas, which is which is nice, even though it's not really green. It's got flowers, so I guess that counts. Time to replace wood fire for electricity. In order to build a coal plant, you first need to build a coal mine. On this map, all the subsoil has coal, so you can build it wherever you want. Build a coal mine. Make sure we didn't miss anything there. We did not. So the coal mine I saw here in industry. In order for to get to that, we need to have 2,600 population. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, put up some more houses here. I think we could probably do the uh, the little food market thing. Uh, that's here in Landmarks. The local market, like maybe one in this area someplace. And that would kind of feed these folks in the local area here. And that will give us a few more uh, wealthy village houses to increase our happiness to counteract some of these, um, you know, the iron iron miners houses that we've, we've been building lately. And we can put a few more houses around this as well then. Like that. Maybe we can expand this out. Although maybe I want this to just be a too wide thing. And then we can do like a road here and back around the back. And then those should become iron miners houses as well. Although I guess I probably didn't quite go that far back with the road. Yeah, I don't think I need to go that far back. That's better. Okay, uh, there's 2,600 uh, people. Yeah, 2,600 people, so a few more. And then once we run out of space with this, we can keep going uh, further. Waiting for them to all fill in here. They haven't quite yet. There they go. And that should probably get us close to 2600. Making sure there wasn't any other requirements we needed to have. But I also just noticed the time. So I think it makes sense to... We just hit 2600, we're going to unlock the coal mine. But I think it makes sense to push the building of that off until the next episode. So I hope you're still enjoying this uh, this game as much as I do. Um, I, I like city builders, as many of you are very aware. And uh, this one has, you know, those those interesting features uh, that are that are compelling and make me want to keep playing it. So um, I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you'll stick around for uh, the rest of the series. And uh, we'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.